Okay. Okay, so we should be recording. Um, so it's okay, I start. We're very on time in Japan. So what I want to do is share my screen, whiteboard. Okay. So I hope it's working correctly. So uh, I wanted to start just to introduce myself uh, briefly. Um, yeah, so I was born in Seattle. Not not appearing. Let me um maybe here white and stuff. Let me try uh share screen two. Here. And then uh screen is stuff screen. Okay, let me try again. Um, let me try again. Maybe start screen two and then uh, maybe okay. share. How about now? It's okay? Okay, so um, I was born in Seattle, which is um, on the north or on the west coast of uh, above uh, Los Angeles and San Francisco, you know, Portland, Seattle, and then uh, Vancouver, Canada. So I went to, uh, when I was in junior high, I went uh, to Texas. I I attended junior high, high school, and a university in uh, Texas, and I, I studied uh, computer science for, for uh, four years at the University of Texas. Then uh, I came to Japan. I worked for a, a game uh, software company. So we, we made uh, these um, video games. Then I worked in a... Uh, uh, a medical imaging company called a JMAC system, which uh, they they make uh, like um, um, what they call PAX picture archiving uh, servers that are installed in hospitals. So in in our hospital, I, I work now. I work in the um, radiation treatment, um, radiation therapy section. So we ha we have a, a JMAC server there in. Uh, so they make. Um, <clears throat> J is a Japan and a medical, Japan and medical. Then I, I came to the university here and um, my first job was, was setting up this, uh, uh, what do you call cluster, PC cluster. So to run it uh, parallel, these uh, GNT4 Monte Carlo simulations. So uh, we, um, this was simulating uh, um, spot scanning with uh, protons. And then I made uh, this uh, DICOM RT. DIC RT stands for uh, radiation therapy. So uh, usually a DICOM file, we, we think of like a, a CT file, but there's actually uh, several different types of DICOM files. So one is, uh, it's called a dose. This uh, you see this um get my cursor here. My cursor. Where is my cursor? Here it is. Oops. All right. I got the wrong uh, pointer laser. So a DICOM RT uh, consists of a CT file. 
and uh, dose. This is we call a dose wash, dose distribution, and uh, row E. So it's hard to see in this image, but I have a the target uh, row E region of interest, and uh, so on. Then uh, I made a, this is a uh, Accufuse, uh, which uh, um, before they start therapy, they want to make sure that the uh, couch, treatment couch, is ex in the exact location so that you don't uh, irradiate the wrong. So so this, this is called, or excuse me, this is called a, a portal image. So it's, it's made with a, a double exposure. So uh, th this region is is called the field, and uh, so you want to. This is the uh, planning uh, CT. They call a DRR. This is a DRR is a um, created from the planning CT. So the, these two uh, images should be exactly the same. So you use, use uh, the bony features to align the patient couch. And then I made uh, this, um, this is the uh, DICOM RT viewer. So in, in our hospital, we have uh, several different uh, planning software. There's a uh, Eclipse and there's Pinnacle and other brain lab. We have all these different uh, software for planning uh, therapy, but uh, it's a, uh, um, every, it's difficult to view or compare uh, different plans made on different software. So uh, if they all they all will uh, export to a DICOM RT, is a DICOM RT is a standard format. So uh, this will uh, view the uh, DICOM RT files. And this was um, spot scanning. So in the proton, in the proton section, we use the uh, spot scanning technique. So this was a, a GANT4 uh, Monte Carlo simulations. And this was a gold nanoparticles. And uh, recently I've been working a lot with um, a professor is not radiation therapy, but um, um, what do you call rheuma, rheumatitis? Uh, when old people, their uh, joints get become very um, sore so uh to uh measure uh the uh, joint the, the disease inside the joints here and finally we'll make mouse do it yeah. my mouse is not working recently i've been working at this is a laser um, photoimmunotherapy. So this is kind of experimental um, therapy that uses uh, very high power uh, lasers, laser light to treat uh, patients. So this is the planning software for that. So now uh, I'm uh, with a GCB, which has a um, partnership with Stanford University. Okay, so the that is me. Um, so how about you? Can you give just a brief? Um, so you have to uh, unmute, unmute your um, your microphone. Okay, thank you very much, Sensei, um, for your introduction. Um, my name is Davidson, and I'm from Nigeria. Um, I'm a graduate of the University of Nigeria. Um, with a degree in biochemistry. So I studied biochemistry for my undergraduate degree program. And uh, here in Hokkaido University, I'm in the Faculty of Advanced Life Sciences. Um, my research has to do with, it's mainly chemistry. So it's mm -hmm. chemical synthesis of um, biomolecules and also analysis using spectroscopy, such as vibrational cycular dichroism, um, Raman optical spectroscopy, 
and um, NMR and the rest, but mainly vibrational cycular diaphragm. So we look at the optical activity of um, certain biomolecules and try to find their active configuration and conformation. Um, it's my first time going into that because I'm an M1 student. Um, I just, I mean, I just finished my first semester, but I'm learning a lot from my sensei. And, you know, um, I took this course because I'm also fascin fascinated about AI and machine learning. Um, after my graduation from the university, I actually took it upon myself to learn some Python, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript just to go into the tech world. Um, I didn't know what I was going to use it for at the time, but I wanted to learn because I knew that it was going to be really helpful in the future for me. So I'm really grateful to be in this class. Thank you for having me again. Thank you, Sensei. Okay, good. So you're you, you said you're an M1 student, and you you, you belong in the in the chemistry. No, um, advanced life sciences. Advanced life sciences. Yeah. So uh, where is your uh, main? Uh, your, it's on the north. Um, yeah, the north yeah, frontier the, research. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. So. Um, so this course uh, is hands-on. So uh, let me see here. Hopefully this is working. Um, so last week I, I sent you the books. Okay, so uh, there are 26 books. So obviously we won't have time to uh, cover all the um, information in 26 books. But um, just to give you a brief uh, introduction, um, a lot of the, there are a lot of uh, basic theory, for example, um, um, what was it, a uh, probability, which one? Probability. Um, I forgot which one it was. Calculus. So uh, in this course, I'm not going to try to explain all the theory behind, um, but but you have the books. So if you're interested, and if you're very smart, you can re under try to understand some of the math. Um, there's a what was it? Um, Probability, yeah. Statistics, probability, um, calculus. Okay, Th these are all topics that are very important, but I'm not going to try to cover. So to start off, mainly we're going to be using uh, this book, um, Machine Learning Mastery with Python. Okay, so if you open this book up, Okay, so then uh, if we go down, so we'll skip the uh, first few chapters, background information, and uh, the first topic that I want to cover is uh, where, seven, pretty close. Where is it? Machine learning mastery with Python. I think it's um. Can't find it now. Where's diabetes? Minute. Diabetes. Yeah. First topic uh, is going to be um, uh, diabetes database. So um, let me see here. I'll close this one. See, and uh, back. diabetes. 
So you should have this folder um, I sent last week. And the PowerPoint is here. Okay. So um, I wonder if I just, if I don't share screen, I think it's a, I'll um, share, what should I do here? Share, zoom, share screen. And I think I have to start this, start this, and then alt tab back to zoom. And then share screen two. So can you can you see the slide now? Yeah. It's okay. So, first of all, um, did you install Anaconda? Okay, good. And uh, how about Spider? Did you install? Yeah, it's part. Okay. We, we'll go through it uh, in a minute here. So, uh, these are the books. Um, so, uh, I think... Uh, uh, this this home page, he has uh, thousands of these um, uh, articles on this home page. He's uh, I, and I and the source code. He has lots of source code, and I think um, it's uh, very good because it actually works, and uh, and gives it a very uh, small. Uh, you know, you can understand a small uh, bit of code. And then exp and he explains it very uh, well. So I think uh, um, his uh, his homepage and he's in Australia, and his uh, books are very uh, good. So these are uh, these bundle. Let's call this super bundle that we downloaded, and we'll start off with this one book here, Machine Master mastery so uh so we'll start off with this example um Pima people are um uh, uh, native uh american um tribe lives in the state of arizona so on on the left of this map is is a uh, is a uh, california green Over here is California, and over here is New Mexico. So it's very, um, so uh, what they did was uh, collect. Um, I don't know why my mouse does not work. Go. Okay. So you should uh, have this um, CSV file. So. Are you able to uh break up? Okay. So are you able to find this file? Diabetes, Prima Indians Diabetes. Okay. Um, Please wait a moment. So uh, they uh, collected um, uh, data uh, for uh, five years on uh, women in, in this tribe. And uh, those who contacted diabetes, they uh, kept a record uh, who went on later to develop diabetes and who did not develop diabetes. I don't know why this is not working. Update. 
it's updating. So um, I'll just go on here. Um, okay. So, um, okay, so if you open this file, here it comes. Okay. So this is the file. Um, so the first column on the left over here is a number of times pregnant. Okay. The next column. I'll just go through like this. Uh, plasma glucose. So it's a kind of blood test, the sugar in the blood test. Column three is a uh, blood pressure and a uh, tricep fold. So the uh, arm on the arm here, the, the, um, lower part of the arm here, they measure the uh, hot thickness. So this, that's called tricep skin fold thickness. And uh, another blood test. And on a BMI. And uh, pedi pedigree is uh, if you're a family, if you have uh, diabetes in your family. And uh, age. So the, the key to this is on the right here, you have these zero and one. So that is an onset within five years. So they followed uh, all these patients for five years and they entered a zero or one over here. Okay, so this is uh, what we call the label in a, in a artificial, when you're training. So uh, this is a kind of, um, what they call supervised learning. So later, later we'll uh, learn about unsupervised learning. Okay, but this is supervised, means that uh, all the data has a, a label, a zero or one, a positive or negative for diabetes. Okay, so um, are you able? So from a uh, Anaconda, are you able to launch a spider? You can. Anna, can you can you open uh, this first um, load loaded data? This file. Got it? Okay. So um, <clears throat> what I want to do is I said, you see this little red dot over here called a, a break point. Okay. You want to set a break point on this uh, line here. Okay. So you up above, you see uh, you have a run and you have a debug. Okay, there's two. The, if you run, it, it won't stop at the breakpoint. So, so at first we want to press uh, debug the file. Okay, so press this, it'll stop here at uh, this line. Okay, it's kind of hard to see, but, it, but it's sitting here waiting at the breakpoint. Okay, can you see that? Okay, then these buttons over here, this is step over and step into, step out. So next uh, we want to press this um, 
run the current line, step over. Okay, like that. Okay, then uh, you should be able, uh, over here, we have a help and plots and files. You want to look at a file, our variable explorer here. Can you see that? And then uh, this data set up here, I'm gonna du double click on that. Okay, so this should look the same, what we uh, saw in the Excel. So that, can you see that? Okay. So you see uh, on the right, the right column eight over here is a zero and one. Okay, so that's a label. Okay. So the next step, um, so we loaded the data. And uh, by the way, this load text, uh, we in, import from a NumPy. So NumPy is, is a um, Python uh, number library. So we're use, we used, there, there, later we'll see other, there's more than one way to load a file, but this is uh, one way. Okay, so the limit, the eliminator is a comma. So, so CSV stands for comma separated value. So it's an easy way to uh, save a data with a separated by a comma. Okay, so this next line here, uh, it, we want to separate the uh, tr the data from the label. Okay, so in a in a AI programming, they often call the the training data is X, and the uh, label is Y. Don't ask me why, but that's what <laughs> what they call it. Here he uses a uh, small he uses a, a capital X, or so but sometimes you'll see other different names. So if we, we step over this line here, we see an X come up over here in the uh, variable. So if you can double click on X, you can see it's, it's the same, except it only comes out to column seven here. Okay, so so this this line here means a, a copy, all, um, copy all the rows Okay, but column, column zero to eight. Okay, but uh, you have to be careful that eight here means uh, we start out column zero over here. So it's actually, this is actually column zero to seven. Okay, okay so the next line is a, get the, um, uh, the label. Okay, so if we double click on this, we can see um, all the column was column eight of original data. Now we've copied it to um, to this new variable y. Okay, so it's just a one columns here. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, let me, let me try. Uh, I, I just wanted to try uh, and share. Wait, let me uh, stop. I don't think I'm sharing now. Can you share? Uh, the... Yeah, that's Okay. And now, uh, so this is uh, X. Yeah. 
You have to uh, make it stand one more. Okay. Step one. Okay, so you can uh, stop sharing. Stop sharing. Okay. Okay. So the next step. It is now nine fifteen. The next step. Okay, so you come up to open open file. And uh, number two, define model. Okay. So I think uh, before we run uh, this, I think I have some slides here. Um, this is load data, right? So define the model. Let's um. I think I changed this um, later. Yeah, you can do the same thing. Set a, uh, a breakpoint here at load text and then debug. It should uh, hopefully uh, takes a it takes time because we're now we're importing a uh, tensor flow. I think it's uh, yeah. Okay, you might you might get an error message. Do you have an error message? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, can you uh, share your screen? Okay. Good. Okay. So you have this uh, error message: uh, no module named TensorFlow. Okay. That's because. Uh, uh, if you can see in the top left up here, we said from TensorFlow uh, import something, okay? So what you have to do is uh, go back to uh, Anaconda. Okay, can you switch back? Anaconda. Um, yeah, can you can you just click on the uh, anaconda icon at the bottom? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I, I want you to continue share. Yeah, okay, yeah, good. Okay, from here, um, uh, okay, it says uh, um, environments. Now, now on the left, you on the on the left it says a uh, home. But underneath home, it says environments. Yeah, click on that one. Okay. So from here, yeah, you already have one uh, tensor flow. Okay. So so uh, probably uh, uh, the best way is uh, go back to spider and close spider. Okay. Close, close this. Yeah. Okay, now uh, go back to Anaconda. And uh, you see it on the top, there's all applications and then base. Yeah, this one. Click that to TensorFlow, yeah. TensorFlow. Okay. Now you, you may have to reinstall. Uh, yeah, so click install. You have to reinstall Spider every time. Okay, so while, while that's going, so, so um, that will take a minute to, um, so so why, why don't you stop sharing and I'll uh, continue. Okay, so, so tell me uh, when that finishes.
and uh, we'll come back. So, um, so this this uh, uh, beginning of this code is the same. So we read the data set and we split it into X and Y. And then uh, we get down here a model equals sequential. So this will um, uh, define our models. Okay, so we print, we print the model. You can see over here, uh, this is um, what they call the, um, the model. Okay, this is a very simple. So we, we can see here, uh, it has eight uh, input dimensions. Okay, that's because uh, uh, X here, X here goes from uh, zero to seven. So there's eight columns of data that we're going to input into this model. Okay, so uh, this 12 here, this is, this is what they call a uh, hyperparameter, which is a some number that uh, you have to decide somehow. Okay, it's sometimes it's uh, you don't know how to decide, but later I'll give you some tips. Okay, how to set this number here. So in general, I would say uh, the input is eight. So it should be at least eight, but it can be like 12 or 24 or 32, whatever. Okay, I'll explain that more. Then uh, I'll explain about uh, these activation and here. Okay, I think uh, from this slide. Okay, so we compile fit. I wanted to skip down a little bit here. So our model basically looks like this. Okay. Um, this this input layer here, it shows two here, but it's actually eight, eight inputs. And then a, the the middle is called a, a hidden layer. Okay. So this is now as 12. This shows three here, but there's actually 12 in our model. Okay. And then the one output uh, neuron, these are each of these circles are called a neuron. Okay. So uh, what what is a neuron? So I want to, I wonder, I think, yeah. Let me um share, I'll go back, share screen. Share, uh, wait. I want to, um, here. And I want to share it. Okay, so you should see you should see this now. Okay, so this is a um our network here. So we have eight input neurons and twelve uh neurons in the hidden layer and a one output. Okay, so what, what are these neurons? So um, basically um, a neuron has uh, several inputs. Okay, here, here we show uh, three, but actually in our model, uh, we start off with eight, there's eight inputs, okay, but we only, uh, on this, um, let me draw. Um, there's a bunch of, okay, there's, we draw three here, but it's actually eight. Okay, the eight inputs, and uh, each each uh, input is going to be multiplied by a weight. Okay, you multiply all those together, and you sum them up, and you add a bias. Okay, and whatever the output of that is called the output of the neuron. Okay, and the activation uh, function determines the shape. Okay, so um, I'll show. Okay, 
So a very simple uh, step function uh, looks like this. So um, the W here is the weights, the X is the inputs down here. Okay, but you have to be careful. The, these uh, W and X are actually vectors. Okay, it looks like one number here, but there actually could be um, eight or 12 or whatever. But uh, the B, the bias is always just one number. It's not a vector, okay? So the dot product, if you remember from your um, calculus class, um, you multiply them together, multiply them by this weight, by weights, and then a sum up, okay? But um, actually, we don't use a step function very often because uh, the, the input is, is down here. It's labeled Z on this graph. <laughs> the input is here, OK, on the horizontal. And the output is here on the vertical axis. So the problem with the step function is that when the, um, the input is very close to 0, say it's 0 0.1, then the output will be one, but it's, it's, it's very slightly to the left of zero here, a minus value, then it, it's zero. So it's too, um, I say, um, drastic. In Japanese, we say hageshi. Do you take a Japanese class? It started, but one uh, word in Japanese called hageshi means uh, it's kind of a violent or a too crazy hageshi. So uh, what we want is more smooth function. So that's uh, what a sigmoid. You see, you see this a lot in AI, the sigmoid function. So it's so think about the input is zero here. The output will be a zero point five. Okay, but now when uh, we're near to zero, we have a nice smooth uh, transition between uh, zero and one. We don't have a very sharp uh, going back and forth. Okay. So uh, sigmoid the f in, in mathematical function looks like this. So this is the same. Uh, s multiply this weight vector by the input vector and uh, then uh, subtract the bias. And uh, this exponent function here is uh, this mathematical function. Okay. So in, in uh, Python, the code might look something like this. Use um, the NP is a NumPy we saw before. NumPy library do a um, do a dot product dot product the weights times the input plus the bias, and then feed that into the sigmoid function. So this uh, this is a uh, it's called exponent in in NumPy. We call we use this. Uh, uh, exponent function. Okay, so that will give us a nice uh, smooth curve like this. Okay, so, um, but uh, we also saw uh, a ReLU. If you remember in the code, there, there was a activation equals sigmoid, but there was another activation equals ReLU. ReLU. Yeah, it's called a, a rectified linear units. <laughs> it's a very strange name. But uh, basically, uh, th think about a ReLU is the same as sigmoid, but it's a uh, faster. Okay. The problem with, especially when uh, you're running a, a GPU, is that uh, uh, you, want, you want to be able to train very fast. Okay. And uh, the, in theory, you, you should always use a sigmoid, okay? But in practice, we use a ReLU because you can see this is a very simple, if, uh, if the input is negative, just return a zero, okay? If the input is positive, just return the, the value. So this is a, a very, very simple uh, calculation. Okay, the sigmoid here, this this smooth curve, think of like a square root or a sine and cosine trigonometry or um, there's one more, um, can't think of it now. 
anyway, uh, th those kind of mathematical functions uh, are uh, difficult to compute. Okay, so in, especially in, in AI, uh, we want to run on a GPU and we want to do a millions and millions. You have to calculate this over and over millions of times, okay? So if you use a sigmoid all the time, it would run very slow. So we use a ReLU just because it's faster and it's almost basically the same shape. It's not quite as good as this uh, shape, but it's close enough. Okay, so um, functions like tan sigmoid tan tan h is similar to sigmoid, except uh, the output instead of from zero to one, it goes from minus one to one. Okay, so sometimes you see this uh, tan h. Okay, but th just think that sigmoid tan h is same thing. Okay, but uh, ReLU, ReLU is used uh, because they're faster. Okay, so very simple. Um, okay, so if we um, go back to uh, go back to our code here, um, you see that um, in the this is the uh, activation ReLU here on the hidden layer, okay? But on the final layer, we use the sigmoid, okay? So that's because um, there's usually, in the hidden layers, there's usually a lot, a lot of uh, neurons in the hidden layers, okay? But on the output, there's only one. This is the final output, okay? So so here we only have to compute at one time. So it's, so uh, that's uh, we want a nice smooth output uh, for the final layer. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry, say again. Uh, okay. So uh, can you share? I don't think I'm sharing it. So let's let's try um let's try um the new environment. I think we will have a plan for example um kind of create I I don't like about Anaconda, it's very slow. <laughs> now in this environment. Okay. So this is what we had installed now. So uh, go to all, install, install, and then we need to uh, search. Like a new um, tensor flow
Uh, actually, you don't need to come. In the past, in the past, you did need it. But uh, recently, uh, it has become a part of the So I think it's actually better not to install it first. I'll show you the. But then, um, it's actually called I Spider, uh, so, yeah, I've noticed that, um, well, I, 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 I not, not on my, uh, this computer, but on my, uh, other computer. When I uh, install the GPU, then I can uh, install the spider on MP1. You have to uh, this is it's a continue here. Right? You have to wait because uh, so what it's doing is it's loading TensorFlow. Oh. Okay, TensorFlow is a huge library, and it takes uh, a minute to know, especially the first time. The second time you need to do it as a test. You have to be patient. Now you can see that. It could. It could. Now when you get down to print here. So this, this is the problem here. Now you can see you can have a well this is a number of them. You have one helpful. Okay, so you can stop sharing. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Today's lecture is supposed to be 90 minutes. We started at 8.45. So we were supposed to end at 10.15. We've made good progress. Okay, so we have uh, more than 30 minutes left. Okay. We're moving along here. Okay, so yes. Yeah. Okay, so the next step is um, spider is to open up number three train. Okay. Okay, number three here is the same. We uh, comp so we defined our model and we compiled it. Okay, so um, so this model um, you see the the last the last layer here is um the sigmoid. Okay, that means that the output of this um network is going to be from zero to one, some floating point number. Okay, it might be 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 
something between zero and one. Okay, so if if the output is between zero and 0 0.5, that means it, it's negative, it means that they did not get diabetes. Okay, if it's 0 0.5 to one, it means it's positive, that they probably will get diabetes. Okay, so think of it like that. So um, when we compile it, we uh, this uh, binary cross entropy is our loss function. Okay, so it's a binary because uh, it's a yes-no question. Is it positive or negative diabetes? Okay, so later we'll, we'll see uh, different options here. And then the optimizer is Adam. Okay, so that's this is, uh, 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 later we'll talk about a, a, a stochiastic gradient descent. So how, how to uh, adjust the very, so so uh, don't really worry about that for now. The gist of the optimizer, is, Adam, is a popular choice. I'm not sharing the screen? Okay. Let me see. Sharing the screen. Um, The screen. Okay. Okay. So um, that is a uh, binary cross in the atom, and the metrics is accuracy. Okay. So we'll see these. Okay. So um, what I would do is sit, is uh, you don't even need to uh, step through this. Just just hit. Uh, before we had a, a debug. Okay, but don't use that. Use a run, okay, because it's faster. Sometimes if you hit debug, it, it takes a long time. Okay, you should see something like this. Okay, did, did you run? Did it finish? Did it give you accuracy? 74? Yeah. So uh, it's not always exactly the same. So this is kind of like a, um, like Monte Carlo. It uses a lot of random numbers. Okay, so it won't always be exactly the same. But the interesting, if you go back to the top, okay, at the top up here, it started off as 0 0.6, 0 0.58, okay? So it, usually uh, if, if it's binary classification, uh, usually starts off at about 0.5, okay? Because it uh, doesn't know anything, what's correct or incorrect, okay? But uh, as you go down, it should uh, uh, gradually improve, okay? Okay, good progress. So we have our accuracy. I'll say, by the way, um, do you know what this means? This uh, accuracy equals model evaluate, okay? There's actually another value called a, a loss, okay? But in this case, uh, we want to ignore the loss function, okay? So uh, in a Python, you can just ignore uh, the return value with uh, this code here. If, have you ever, uh, do you have any experience uh, other programming language like a C or a... JavaScript. JavaScript? Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, I, I, uh, I'm a C, usually I use a C. And so for me, this, this looks very strange to <laughs> see, but uh, it's just uh, Python way to uh, say, oh, I'm, I'm not interested in the um, loss value. I'm only interested in accuracy. Accuracy is easier to understand, okay? Because at the end, it got 70 something percent, correct?
output. Yeah, in the case of the output console. Uh, here, yeah, this loss loss function here, yeah. So um, you, you could you could say a uh, um, loss. You could you could say a loss, and then a print. You could print, uh, for example, a loss loss, and a say a loss loss. I don't know what it is, F something. Maybe something like this will work, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Ready? Can you hit it? Yes. So it has to go through again. See if it works. So these epochs, you see these epochs here and a uh, batch size. Okay. So later, uh, oops, here, not enough already. Loss. I forgot how to do it in, uh, in Python. This is a uh, F. Anyway, I I'll fix it later. <laughs> I'm not very uh, good at, uh, you put a space, I don't know, I forget, loss. I'll work on it later. Um, so anyway, uh, I'll explain uh, the epochs and a uh, batch size later. Batch size, uh, you can just think of it um, as a way of, of speeding up the a larger bat. If the training is taking too long, okay, maybe it takes a, you know 10 days to finish training. Okay, you say, oh, I can't wait that long. So sometimes you can increase the batch size. Okay, so now it's 16. For example, try 32. Okay, so then it'll it'll make it, the training go faster. Okay, so that's one one way kind of think about batch size. But sometimes you want uh, you you're not worried about the speed. You want the best possible result. So sometimes you set the batch size to one. Okay, you know, sometimes you see that, but um. This is another uh, one they call a uh, hyperparameters. Okay, so we saw before this number 12 here. Okay, this is uh, one of those parameters that you just have to set something. You do, there's no uh, good exact rule how to set it. That's your job as the uh, programmer. Okay, so let's go to number or add another hidden layer, yeah. Right, so in, um, if I go back to, um, if I go back here, I think, um, yeah. Right, so this, this 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 network has has a one hidden layer, okay. But sometimes uh, we can improve the accuracy, get a better result if we add a two layers here. So you can kind of see up here. This has a uh, eight inputs, and then twelve and eight, uh, two two hidden layers. Okay, you see this common, this is common um, uh, structure. Okay, so on the uh, spider here, so we have eight and 12 here. So notice that uh, hidden layers, again, we're using ReLU for activation because it's faster. The final output is sigmoid, okay, it's the same. So if we run this, we should see um, takes a little bit slower to uh, train. It, not bad. Maybe if you timed it, you would see that in general, as your network gets more complicated, it takes longer to train, but it's not too bad.
Okay, so here we saw actually that it got worse. Okay, so th this is um, kind of thing that you don't know if it's good until you test it. Okay, so it's always important to, to uh, test. So the reason it, it, it lots of times if the if you made the uh, network uh, bigger, but the result was was worse, it, it's it's because you don't have enough training data. Okay, in in this data here, uh, you can see we have uh, 700, 7, 768 um, samples of data. Okay. But uh, maybe uh, it's, it's not enough to, tr if we had 7,000 or, you know, 7 million, okay, maybe then uh, we could train. So so um, that's uh, uh, another, uh, what we call hyperparameters, is uh, how many layers are best. So you cannot answer that question except by just uh, trying with the data that you have available, okay? So, Okay, so next uh, we'll go, this is what, five or four? Number five, make a prediction. Uh, excuse me, save the model. Okay, so now uh, it's almost the same. Except now at the bottom here, it says, you see this model save, save, okay? So this, uh, if we run it now, it'll go through again. So you don't wanna have to go through this uh, training process every time, okay? Because it takes, as you can see, takes a little bit of time. So uh, usually uh, uh, when you're finished uh, training, you want to save, save your work. Seventy-seven. Okay, so now if if you look, uh, you should have a a file called a model h five. So uh, h five is uh, is some kind of a standard format used for um, saving these kind of models. Okay, so that worked. So now we can go number six. Number six, make a prediction. Okay, now um, what we can do is, um, so now, now we don't train the data anymore. We load, we load the uh, model h 5 Okay, and then uh, if you you can just run this and see the result. Okay, so what this 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 does it loads it loads the model, and then it prints out it prints it out so you can check the um, it should look like this, and then it it uh, uses the uh, data that we have here um let's see what does it mean it uses the first it just loops through the first five uh data and uh you can see um <clears throat> let's see let's see what it does okay so uh you can see here uh this this is the input data, okay? So this is same as the first line up here. Come back to the top. Okay, this should be the same, 6, 148, something, something. Okay, 6, 148, okay. So this is the first line of the input data. And the output here was um, 0.57. Okay, so so this number, excuse me, this number is more than zero point five. Okay, 
So that means that it's a, it's a should be a one. And then uh, this is expected here. Okay, this is the label. Okay, so this is uh, this value here. Okay. So normally they should be the same, but um, not always. So, so for example, if you do a little more than five, for example, you, you do 10, do 10 of them. And uh, you should see sometimes, okay, you see here on the last one, it output a zero. Okay, so it said uh, this person will not get diabetes, but in fact, the patient did develop. Okay, so this is, uh, you can see it's not 100% accurate. Sometimes it makes mistakes. Okay. So what's next? Let's go on. Do you have a question? This is kind of a tricky code here. You might want to, um, you can set a breakpoint here and then uh, don't hit run, but hit uh, debug. Okay. So then it'll stop here and then uh, you step over. Okay, so what is predict X? Okay, so, so what we did is uh, we input X. X is like all the data, okay? So that's like 768. Um, uh, we, we input all the, we sent all the data to the network, okay? And then uh, predict X gave a long uh, column here of the results. So, so 0 0.5 means it's positive or one, and 0 0.3 here would be negative or, or zero. Okay. So that's predict X. So the next step is uh, we want to convert uh, to classes, okay? So classes, um, so if it's more than 0.5, it, it, we want a, a one. If it's less than 0.5, we want a zero. Okay, so this code here uh, converts uh, from a from 0 0.5 and a, this int 32 will convert from a floating point number to an integer. Okay, so that's the uh, classes. So then uh, we print classes here and then compare that with y y is the, is the label is it is the true value okay okay easy to understand <laughs> okay so let's Let's go on. So, is it okay we go on? Okay. So let's, um, the next, we have about 15 more minutes. And then we'll take a break. So uh, next one, that was six. So make predictions. Okay. So this, So number six, uh, we, we just fed all the data into, uh, we called, on number six, we used um, model.predict, okay, but we fed all of our training data into, but that's not actually very um, uh, realistic. So a more realistic um, example here is, uh, you see that I made a, a test this diabetes test uh, CSV. Okay, so that's this is just data for one patient. Okay, so this is uh, 
just for one, one patient. So this is a more a realistic test. So uh, we, um, we can step through this. We can step through this if we go deep. Uh, step over. Okay. So now, this is a the data set now you see it's one uh but you have to be careful it's a one it's not a row now it's a column okay sometimes uh confusing okay so now at x we're going to split it uh but you see now instead of a two-dimensional array it's now a one-dimensional because we only read uh, one patient here. Okay, so this is just uh, columns, or excuse me, rows from zero to eight. Okay, so if we step over X, should look like this, okay. Then uh, Y will just be a single value here. It's just a single uh, floating point value here. Okay, but the problem is that uh, uh, our our uh, the problem is that uh, x here we want to input this into the um, network that we saved model dot h five. Okay, but the problem is that this is a columns. Okay, we would need to reshape this into a, into a long rows. So that's why uh, we use this reshape. Okay, so this is part of the Python. So if we step over, we can see X reshape now looks like this. Okay. This is what we want. Something, something like that. Also notice uh, it, sometimes uh, it can be tricky. You see these uh, uh, two you see these two um, brackets here. Up here on X, we just have one bracket, okay? So to input to the the uh, to the model, it, it's assuming that you have, you're, you're going, it assumes that you're gonna send more than one patient. You know, like you, you, it's it's much faster if you, uh, you, can, you know, if you have 10 patients, just to send them all at one time, okay? But, uh, we're only we only want one patient, but we still have to make it, it's a, a two dimensional array. It's still a two dimensional array, okay. But there's only one uh, row, okay. So that's why you, you see up here there's a two two brackets up there. We have to be careful. If you try to send a with just one bracket, it'll make an error message. So we can load the model, print the summary, and then uh, predict. We call a predict with um, shape, with a reshaped. So this should be the same. Predict, yeah, before predict, predict. Okay. Okay. But then th this is the same convert uh, from a uh, Classes you can see here, uh, predict X. Okay, here too, you see uh, um, there's two brackets up here. Okay, it really returned, normally it returns a big vector of results. Okay, but we only have one result. That's why you see is uh, float one, one here. It's actually an array of floats with one value. You would think it would just return one value, but you have to be careful. It's, it's actually a, uh, an array of, of floating point values. Okay. So then uh, we can convert, this is the same convert to classes here. Okay. So we have one, you see here these, these double uh, brackets on the classes here. And then the print, 
Okay, so you see it guessed wrong. It... Okay. Okay, so any questions on that one? So you can, you can imagine you, you could build a, um, a user interface that allows the uh, nurse to input the patient data. And then uh, you would take a um, data like this and you could send it to the, uh, to your uh, AI robot. Okay, you kind of see how it works. Closest. Okay, so next one is number eight. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to go back, go back to a training, but this time we're going to make a, a plot. Okay, so this is a. So probably if uh, if you. So, yeah, so why don't you uh, share, I'll stop sharing here and I'll let you share. Okay, so plot, yeah. So i uh, try to run this. I, th I think you'll get an error message. You don't have a mat plot live. So tr just try, try to run. Yeah, All right, no, right. Okay, so, so uh, can you go back to Anaconda? Yeah, now uh, uh, we're using test. Okay, so click on environments. This is okay. Leave leave this the same. Don't don't, don't change this. But go on the left. You see it says environment. Yeah, environments. And um, then uh, yeah, all the you want, you want to search for a uh, mat plot live. Plot live. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, you have it for Jupiter. Okay. That's okay. Let's try to apply. Try to apply this. Yeah. That's okay. And hit apply again. Pray, pray, please. Okay, okay. Now you should you should be able to just go back to Spider now, and I'll run again. I can run it. Okay, so this time it ran. Okay. Now um, uh, you see it. It says variable explorer on the to the right. A variable explorer. There, it says plots. Can you see the plots? Yeah. Okay. So this is um. There's actually a uh, two plots here. There's one above. Okay. So this is the um, accuracy, and the one below is loss. So in general, this is a uh, the loss should should fall drop like this like you see and the accuracy should go up okay okay so it's working so um this uh works uh let's see uh you see it says a model fit model fit down here so this is where it does all the training inside of fit here but now uh, we're saying history equals model fit. Before we just had model fit, we didn't store the history. Okay, so the history is a uh, it stores uh, each step, each step, each ep epoch. It stores the uh, uh, accuracy and a uh, loss function, loss value. Okay, so then uh, below that we say plot history with the history. Okay, so this is a little um, function, plot history, that uh, you can modify this. 
you can uh, um, late later we'll see different versions of this um, function. So these these kind of um, these are called the um, the loss and the loss function. These, we use this a lot, so you can uh, uh, track how how well is it. So sometimes you'll see, uh, uh, for example, accuracy will will start to go up, but then it'll just stay flat. Okay, so you know you have a problem. So uh, this this these uh, these plots give you a lot of information when when you're trying to uh, different um, uh, hyperparameters. You can add more neurons. If you add more neurons, does that help? Does it make it worse? Okay, you can change the activation functions. You can change all kinds of uh, things. Okay, so we use these plots a lot. Okay, so let's let's go to. Um, okay, so you can stop sharing. And uh, we still have about five more minutes. So let's let's try one more here. If I share. Okay, so let's, that was plot, plot, okay, so the next topic is, um, okay, so until now, we've been uh, uh, loading the data, and uh, We've been separated into X and Y. Okay, so the X is our training data and the Y is the label. Okay. But in fact, uh, when when for uh, for a real example, you, you, you don't uh, use all your data for training. You want to uh, uh, kind of hold they say hold back, hold back some data for testing. Okay, the reason is until now we, we've been uh, uh, testing, it's the same, same data that we're training on. So it's kind of cheating, okay? Because the, you're, you're inputting uh, uh, data that, that the uh, network has already seen before, okay? So usually, um, uh, let me put a breakpoint here. Usually um, we, we divide the data it's, it was actually a three, three uh, kinds of data. You usually you have testing, or excuse me, training, training data, and testing data, and validation data. There's three kinds of data. Okay, so what's the difference between these three types? So um, you can see in this example, first we we separate the X and Y, so Y is just the label. But then uh, we're going to hold back 10% of the data for testing. Okay, so this is uh, at, at the final step. You remember at the very bottom when it uh, prints accuracy, okay? We want to uh, use, uh, we don't want to use the training data. We want to use the testing data, okay? So uh, this this uh, uses um, train test split, which is um, part of a library. So you might get an error message here. Yeah. So why don't we try this? Actually, let's uh, let's take a break. We'll take a uh, fifteen minute break, and then we'll come back. Okay, because now it's ten fifteen. So I'll stop, stop, sure. And I want to stop recording.